Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. This video is a re-upload of a video I posted a few months ago but had to delete because the inbound traffic on it, basically traffic coming in from a weird website, resulted in my YouTube channel being partially demonetized. Please don't share this or any of my videos on the Hacker News Forum or it might put me back in a very bad situation. If you have seen this video before, feel free to watch it again since it's a very interesting story about a brilliant individual broadcasting a dozen 1080p and 4K channels over the air using the existing ATSC 1.0 TV standard. Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. A local TV station recently changed a few technical things behind the scenes and is now broadcasting several 4K channels free over the air. It can be accessed on most TVs without the need for an ATSC 3.0 or next-gen tuner. How is this possible and where is this TV station located? So we all know that 4K is one of the big promises of the new ATSC 3.0 over-the-air TV standard. However, none of the big networks have upgraded to 4K due to a combination of upgrade expenses and bandwidth limitations with multiple channels sharing one single ATSC 3.0 lighthouse signal. So how is it possible that one TV station was able to launch not just one, but multiple 4K channels in ATSC 1.0 all on one single RF channel? The TV station doing it all is K03IMD, a low power TV station in Eugene, Oregon. It currently broadcasts four channels in 4K, 2 in 1080p, and 8 in 720p, all on one single RF channel. How is this possible? It's possible with certain video codecs. You see, most TV stations use MPEG-2 on their over-the-air broadcasts, which was developed in the 90s along ATSC 1.0 and isn't efficient at all. A TV station can technically use any video codec they wish on ATSC 1.0, as long as it fits in the 19 megabit payload on it. In a previous video, I mentioned how some TV stations in New York City switched to the more efficient AVC or MPEG-4 video codec, but there are even better codecs out there, like HEVC. The TV station K03IMD is using a combination of both AVC and HEVC codecs to fit multiple 4K and HD video feeds on one single RF channel. What's even more fascinating is that these channels can be decoded fine on most modern TVs, sold in stores because many of them support AVC and HEVC codecs for streaming apps. I had the opportunity to interview station owner Anton Capella and ask him some questions about this miraculous discovery. Parts of it will be included in this video, but if you'd like to watch the full interview, I include a link to it in the description. So how exactly were you able to figure out broadcasting multiple 4K and 1080p channels on ATSC 1.0? Okay, so to answer your question, Tyler, I guess I guess it's starting from the top, you know, it's worth mentioning that my background is in, in video in general, so networks, IP, video over IP, all that kind of stuff. Sitting home over COVID with a new television in my living room, bought a 4K, you know, Ultra HD set, uh, really prompted me to look into a bit more deeply, you know, how, how stuff is actually formatted and how stuff really works over the air. In, in, in that discovery, in that kind of research phase, I realized that there might be a way to get, you know, something that wasn't expected, maybe some newer codex over the air uh, into the set. And wouldn't it be interesting, I thought, if it just happened to decode it. Doing a bit of research, uh, digging around and, and seeing what is happening uh, elsewhere in the world got me interested in pursuing, you know, this line uh, a bit more deeply. And it starts with, you know, some, some lower cost digital cable modulators that had IP inputs that I could feed you know, trivially or easily from uh, a laptop or something like that as a convenient source. And then, you know, proof of concept later or two, uh, I realized that, yeah, in fact, I can get some of this, you know, advanced codec stuff, the ABC codec MPEG-4 video, as well as HEVC, you know, transported over uh, some network and, and come out in, in clear QAM or cable format. Uh, and then I thought, well, if that much works, why not try ATSC 1.0? Uh, over the air in a radio channel format. What could I do with that? Was the real, real guiding question here? And the answer was what we're seeing here, what we're talking about now. And that is uh, being able to, you know, not just uh, transport one or two, you know, high quality program feeds or, or something in ABC or HEVC, but 
turns out tens of or dozens of these things can fit over a 19.3 megabit payload. What all are you broadcasting on that one single RF channel? To my understanding, there's multiple 4K and 1080p channels. Generally and consistently in the last, say, six to eight months, I've had uh, two to three 1080 channels, so you know, 24p or 30p, and then seven to eight 720p channels, and that could be a range of frame rates from you know 2397 or 24 frames a second up to 60, depending on the network or the program, and then three to four uh, 2160s. That's the 4K, you know, advanced format kind of stuff we're talking about here. So. At any one time, right now, Channel 3 has had 14 programs uh, going in parallel. That's pretty unbelievable that you're able to have, you said, 12 to 14, what would you say, 14 channels on the uh, single RF channel? Yes, that's right today as of, you know, uh, Tuesday in, in March here, uh, 2024, uh, there are 14 programs playing. And most of them being HD, that's absolutely unbelievable. One question I have, understanding that it's all new codecs that you're broadcasting over this channel, what TV sets are able to actually pick up either the AVC or the new HEVC 4K broadcasts? Yeah, well, so great question, Tyler. It, 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 it was interesting to me to discover this as well. And, and starting from the top, uh, I, I looked at, you know, four major lines, uh, flavors, if you will, of Ultra HD TVs first. Figuring, okay, if it's an Ultra HD TV, it's got to at least have HEVC. And to my surprise, and 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 you know, and and uh, pleasure as well, they discovered that all of these had AVC support, of course, as well as MPEG-2 for standard broadcast. And so the four f families I started playing with were LG, uh, the CX55s, the the thin OLEDs, uh, Toshiba TF43 series, that that kind of Toshiba Amazon hybrid that's out there, so-called Fire TV edition. Uh, Vizio V series, uh, and then Samsung 43 inch or larger Ultra HD series as well. So uh, separate from that list, we've had feedback from viewers confirming that Sony, uh, Bravia, and and whatever UHD uh, uh, recent releases they've they've been purchasing or using in that market also does it display and decode uh, the HEVC and ABC programs. So it really seems that if you have a newish TV that is Ultra HD, it does them all. And if you have a somewhat recent-ish TV, let's say 1080 kind of class with a smart TV feature or two, it probably supports AVC as well. And this seems to go back maybe about 10 years. So let's say anyone with something you know newer vintage than say 2012, 2013, 2014, something in that area seems to start also supporting uh, AVC as well, up to 1080, of course. It just blows my mind that you know you're just this guy. I mean, not to sell you short or anything like that, but <laughs> you managed to figure out how to broadcast 4K over the air and not even needing ATSC 3.0, but ATSC 1.0. How come you don't think any other broadcasters seem to have uh, stumbled upon this? Well, I th I think you know there's fits and the starts, and as you mentioned in New York and Chicago, I'll highlight a couple couple discoveries there. There's ABC and also Houston, wherever I put a a, a tuner down, um, HD home run for monitoring and my my own market knowledge, I do see one or two stations doing something with MPEG4 ABC. But I, I think that the the hesitance and and the resistance, if you will, in the industry right now is it's it's one of those cases where the first mover is just going to pay the most, they got the most to lose. I mean, in terms of viewership, uh, because again, you have to have an ATSC3 ecosystem end to end, you know, so the crypto stuff, all the DRM stuff layering on, playback devices have to be in the community, you know, the A3SA is gatekeeping in some ways. And why would you risk your viewership access and everything else to this new format that really has, you know, a limited to maybe a, maybe a really minor population that can receive things today. Anton later added that in addition to picture quality, reception could also be improved by switching to a better video codec. Uh, and I've also, worth mentioning here, discovered that uh, we do have some potential robustness improvements in the decoder side. For folks in fringe areas, um, MPEG-4, uh, out of the gates, had what we call slice-based encoding support in pretty much every decoder I've seen, which means the broadcaster can partition the frame as it sees appropriate in their encoder, meaning that if one data element or object doesn't decode successfully in that overall frame, the whole picture doesn't necessarily have to break up or, or become errored. You can have recovery kind of built into the program uh, over time. And so this is a major departure from MPEG-2 concepts, which didn't require this, this clever slice-based encoding. So I like the idea that even if we're not going towards a higher bitrate delivery thing, and we're not going to try for higher resolution, higher quality things, maybe we can make ATSC just a bit more robust. 
and, and less viewer, you know, unfriendly, let's say, in fringe areas. Wow, so it's possible to broadcast multiple channels in 4K over the air on ATSC 1.0 with better reception for all antenna viewers. Why aren't other TV stations doing this? I can think of a few reasons, and the first one echoes what Anton said earlier in the interview. You know, why would you risk your viewership access and everything else to this new format that really has, you know, a limited to maybe a, maybe a really minor population that can receive things today? As crazy as it sounds, TV stations don't want to lose any antenna viewers as it has a direct impact on advertising revenue. It's the main reason why nearly every TV station in the United States uses the MPEG-2 video codec for their over-the-air broadcasts. It's supported by every single TV and DVR sold since 2007. Codecs needed for 4K, like HEVC, aren't supported by all TVs. The same applies for MPEG-4 or AVC. When a few sub-channels in New York City switched to it, some people were no longer able to watch them on older TVs and even some newer devices like the third generation Tableau. The second reason we're unlikely to see 4K over the air anytime soon is the lack of 4K programming. The native resolution of network and syndicate programming on broadcast TV is still 720p and 1080i. It would cost millions of dollars to upgrade equipment, including cameras, switchers, encoders, and decoders, in order to broadcast 4K. There isn't really a reason for networks and local TV stations to upgrade when the programming isn't 4K yet. Anton echoed this point in the interview. I think the challenge for most broadcasters is what's in 2160. You know, what things are going to be produced and distributed in a way that I could get on air. And maybe that's sports right now, and I can think of one other source on, on, on public broadcast, and that's NASA's Ultra HD feed on a handful of satellites. A final reason we're not seeing 4K on ATSC 1.0, even though it's possible, is the push by broadcasters for ATSC 3.0. 4K is a big selling point of it. Big broadcast groups want ATSC 3.0 to take off to make more money through increased ad revenue and the use of DRM encryption to prevent another low cast from starting up, which compromises the over $14 billion in retransmission fees local TV stations generate every year. Can you believe that most of the features promised with ATSC 3.0 can be achieved on ATSC 1.0 without the need for new equipment, at least for a lot of us? While there are a few additional benefits, ATSC 3.0 seems to be a big money-making scheme among all the companies involved except the consumer. Maybe I'll touch on this more in a future video. Anton and his TV station prove that 4K is possible over the air, but most of us won't see it for a long time for the reasons that I mentioned. When networks do decide to upgrade to 4K, maybe four or five years down the road, I suspect the 4K broadcast will only be available on paid TV and streaming services like we saw with the most recent Super Bowl. At the very least, I hope that some broadcasters begin to embrace the more efficient AVC or MPEG-4 video codec to provide more channels and better picture quality to their antenna viewers as other nations have already done. Be sure to watch my full interview with K03 IMD station owner Anton, linked in the description of the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this YouTube video, and be sure to share it with other TechMind individuals or on forums and Facebook groups, so that way we can spread the word that 4K is possible over the air on ATSC 1.0. We don't need ATSC 3.0 to get it. And additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. My videos help you cut the cord, or if you just think they're cool and would like to support them, while gaining exclusive perks, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man, click the join button in this video, and you can also click the thanks button. You can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA, or sign up to my email list linked in the description below.